All right, and so this is where we left off uh, just talking about free energy, delta G. Um, remembering that this formula is similar to delta H and delta S where we're going to do products minus reactants. And again, you got to be given those um, standard energies of formation values in a table or within the problem, and then you would just plug them in products minus reactants, just like we did for delta H and delta S. And our next formula, I believe, is on your periodic table, um, so we don't have to memorize it, although we'll use it enough where we should. Um, this is how another way we can calculate delta G. And so looking at um, remembering that um, delta G when it's negative spontaneous, so when we look at the spontaneity of a process or a chemical reaction, you can look at delta G. And the sign on delta G can help tell us what's going on. So whether you determine if a process is spontaneous or non-spontaneous, or whether entropy goes up or down, all that stuff we've talked about, there's, there's different things you can look at. So remember that when entropy delta S is positive, all right, so for a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe increases um, but when that, so when delta S is positive for the universe, that's spontaneous, but then delta G is negative, uh, that is also spontaneous. And so we'll look at different scenarios here in a second, um, but this is a formula that I would tell you it's very important for us to know. When we look at Gibbs free energy, so if delta G is negative, the forward reaction is spontaneous. So that means the forward process will occur without any outside intervention. So again, the key here is looking at delta G being negative. That means spontaneous. Delta G is zero, the system's at equilibrium. Uh, we'll get back to that later. So we'll cover that in a later unit when we talk more specifically about equilibrium. So just understand right now, if delta G is exactly zero, then the forward and the reverse process are both occurring at the same time without any outside intervention. And we'll talk more about that um, later. And then finally, if delta G is positive, the reaction is spontaneous in the reverse direction. So that means, so another way to look at that, if the reverse direction is spontaneous, that just means the forward reaction is not spontaneous. And because we talked about if something is spontaneous in one direction, it is non-spontaneous in the reverse direction. So de for us, really what we're going to look at, delta G is negative, that means it's spontaneous, forward. Delta G is positive, that means the forward process is not spontaneous. And so those are kind of what we want to pay attention to the signs uh, to help us determine spontaneity. And so when you look at, um, there's two parts to the equation, the enthalpy term, and the entropy term, and you'll see this brought up in practice questions. They'll ask you, is enthalpy or is entropy playing more of a role in the spontaneity of the process? And so we have to look at which term, the enthalpy term or the entropy term, which term is controlling the sign on delta G from our equation. So when they talk about enthalpy and entropy, make sure that you know which term they're talking about. And then the temperature dependence comes from the entropy term, as you see right here. And we've talked about that um, previously, how temperature can play a role. And now we're going to look at it kind of big picture, looking at enthalpy, entropy, and temperature. And so um, if you want to copy down this chart, um, you can copy down this chart. This is a very important chart to make note of. Um, I'm going to take a second and I'm going to walk you through understanding the chart um, and what we can kind of look at in practice questions. I would say it would be helpful if you know how to make this chart, you know, under scratch work for a test or something like that. So take a picture of this, write it down, copy it down, screenshot it. Um, but here in a second, um, after we get done with this slide, I'm going to um, kind of show you what I would look at and how I would process this chart um, on my own. All right, so when looking at this formula, I've listed out all the possible combinations of signs that we could have on delta H, and so these are just the signs for delta S. 
Um, the other chart went on a little bit more in depth with different things, but this is what I look at when I'm trying to build this chart on a test. And so when I'm looking at this, so I'm gonna start, we'll start the easier one to look at first and then we'll go to kind of the more difficult one. So if I start here at the bottom, if I look at delta H being negative and delta S being positive, well, if delta S is a positive value, the entropy term is going to be negative. And so a negative plus a negative, delta G is always going to be negative. And we know that if delta G is negative, it's spontaneous. And we would say it's spontaneous at all temperatures because it doesn't matter what the temperature is, right? A negative plus a negative is always going to be a negative value. And then we can go one up. If we look at this scenario here, if delta S is a negative value, the entropy term becomes positive. And if the entropy term is positive, then you have a positive plus a positive. That's always going to make delta G a positive value. And so when we have that, when delta G is positive, we know that it's non-spontaneous. And we would say at all temperatures, because it doesn't matter if the temperature is a positive plus a positive, is always going to be positive. Anyone? Now looking at these two scenarios here. So uh, we can just start here. We'll just continue to work our way up. Delta H is negative and delta S is negative. If delta S is a negative value, the entropy term becomes positive. So when your temperature is really, really high, this is the term that controls the sign. And if this is a positive term, that means delta G is gonna be positive at high temperatures. Oh, let's learn how to spell. And then at, it's going to be negative at low temperature. And so when we look at this, again, this is a negative value, making this term positive. So when temperature is really, really high, and this is a really big number, this is going to control the sign. And because it's positive, delta G is positive. But when the temperature is really, really low, then this is becomes a bigger number, and then the sign here controls it. And because this is negative, it's negative at low temperatures. And so we would say that this is spontaneous at low temperatures and non-spontaneous at high temperatures. And there could, there's, there could be practice questions that say under what conditions. So it's, it's spontaneous. Um, when the temperature is low, but as the temperature goes up, it becomes non-spontaneous. What conditions are you looking at? Well, those conditions are delta H is negative, <coughs> excuse me, and delta S is negative as well. And they may give you a chart asking you what, what the possible signs could be. And then looking here, um, positive and positive. So let's look, when delta S is positive, the entropy term becomes negative, right? So when temperature is really, really high, this negative takes over, and so we would say it's negative at high temperatures and becomes positive at low temperatures. And so when temperature is really, really low, this enthalpy term takes over. And because it's positive, it's positive at low temperatures. And so we know that when it's negative, that means spontaneous. And when delta G is positive, we know that means non-spontaneous. And so whether you want to memorize this, I would tell you just, just be able to rationalize this out in your mind, how the sign on delta G can change based off the temperature, but also based off the sign on delta H and delta S. And you'll look at practice questions later today, looking at conditions where it's spontaneous at all temperatures or non-spontaneous at all temperatures or high and low temperature affects spontaneity. You want to think back to this chart and think back to the signs on delta H and delta S.